Stardom 101. Stardom 101. Stardom 101. Stardom 101. It's the Stardom 101 Magazine Podcast. Shine your light on today's tastemakers and innovators. Keep it with your host, Christopher Boyd. It's the Stardom 101 Magazine Podcast. It's Stardom 101 Magazine Podcast here back on iHeartRadio. Thank you guys once again for tapping into our platform. You guys have suggested that we continue to do these type of episodes, these type of features, where we feature prominent talented all across the globe. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I will not disappoint you. I have a star, a bright star in the making. I researched her. She is doing some amazing, amazing things. She goes by the name of Shanir Nicole. Shanir, what is going on, Queen? How are you feeling today? Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I feel great. I feel excited. A little nervous, but no. I didn't. <laughs> You've done this before. You you got this. Don't worry about this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you for having me. Really. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. Well requested. Well requested. Uh, Shouts out to Lana Entertainment Group. And of course, they continue to be one of the biggest supporters of the platform. But for you, a lot of fans, once I put it out there and announced you was going to be on, they wanted to know your journey, your journey into the music industry, your background. Fans always want to get an idea of who we are in an uh, interview. And one of the most requested questions is, when did she get started? How, like, what happened? Like, when did music really touch her and she wanted to pursue it full full time and really give it all she got? Okay, yeah. So my journey, it first started when I was three years old. My first ever manager, my first ever supporter was my mom. She has always supported me. And even if that was, you know, us going to church and having me get up on stage and performing in their talent, a competition thing that they had. And then from there, when I was six years old, I did modeling. And when I was eight years old, I decided to audition for a, a dance program at my school. They were doing auditions and I decided to go there. Mm-hmm. And luckily I got in and I did two years with that dance program. And I met a really nice teacher there who really trusted me and supported me and just wanted to, you know, help me on my journey. And she saw a lot of potential in me, especially Mm -hmm. as a dancer. So I pretty much did an interview with her and she asked me if I wanted to, you know, take my career and dance further. And I said, yes, I did an audition and I actually got to dance professionally for, uh, for a professional ballet dance company for about like six years after that. Oh, Um, wow. Yeah. So I did the Nutcracker and I did a whole bunch of other different uh, professional dance, you know, talent shows and all of that stuff. After doing that, I auditioned for, you know, Disney and I auditioned for America's Got Talent and, you know, a whole bunch of other different auditions, you know, literally anything that my mom could find to put me in to get my name out there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And from there, I think about two years ago, that's when I really started to push myself, especially vocally. Mm -hmm. Um, That's when I, you know, finally got a vocal coach Mm -hmm. and which was honestly the best thing that I could have done uh, to grow and Mm. also feel comfortable with myself. You know, I first started as a dancer and uh, to be able to connect with myself vocally and be able to understand what was coming out of, you know, my mouth, which Mm -hmm. is important. People are listening to you. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with my vocal coach, I was really able to connect with that. And from there, I was able to also learn how to songwrite. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> and I was in high school at the time. So I, I believe I was a senior or a junior. But that's when I really started to learn how to songwrite. And it just became something that wasn't a hobby. It wasn't a hobby for me. It was something that I felt really passionate about. I really just wanted to get whatever I was feeling emotionally mm-hmm. outward onto a piece of paper onto my phone onto literally whatever I could record it onto and like create a song no matter how crazy it sounded I I literally just wanted to to get it out there and especially if it made me feel something mm-hmm. uh, and I was able to get into a studio uh, and it was extremely intimidating very intimidating journey and process and wow. uh, when I do that I don't know. I just fell in, I really fell in love with it. I always loved to perform and I always loved to be on stage and to sing and to dance. And I love to act as well and model all of that stuff. You know, my mom, wow. she, 
so many different things that I could tell you about. I just, <laughs> you know, there's so many different things, but my mom would, uh, she would pick a weekend and we'd pretty much go to a thrift store and we'd pick out an outfit. I'd do my, my makeup, she'd do my hair and she'd take photos of me. And that's how I fell in love with modeling as well. So, I mean, there's wow. so many things that I can tell you, but I think <laughs> recently we came to Houston and we were able to get in contact. My mom was able to get in contact with a liner entertainment group. Mm. And she spoke to Diane Liner, my manager, and wow, like once we signed with the, the talent group, it really, really just went up from there. Um, nice. It really did. I, I did my first ever like really big budget photo shoot and I did a, a music video. We shot a music video. My mom shot it. You know, and now I'm here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the interview with, you know, <laughs> That's what's up. <laughs> yeah so i mean i i I just rambled there but that's pretty no cool. that's beautiful that that's that's what we need they need to see the the progression and what i what i like is their multi-talent background i'm like oh my goodness you are literally just in the beginning you are going to skyrocket i can hear it all in you <laughs> who are some of your influences um some of my influences I think when I first got into like singing, especially growing up in like the early 2000s, uh-huh. it was like such a huge one for me. I mean, she could dance, she can sing. So like, and she can also like act and model. So I just wanted to do all of those things. Uh-huh. And from there, I was just able to dip my toes into different decades of music, different eras. And I just fell in love with like Janet Jackson and, uh-huh. and Jackson and the Beatles, Tears for Fears, Queen. I just fell in love with like a lot of 80s musical artists and especially lyrically. I mean, I fell in love with it, especially with new wave music. I just really, I don't know, it it touched something into me. So, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And you alluded to earlier, Florida to Houston. Houston, out of all places, why was that the next destination for you? Did you see opportunity out here outside of um, obviously linking up with Lana Entertainment Group, but did you see the market? Just the culture of Houston. What was it about Houston that that say, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna go there. That's the next stop. Yeah, I, I think that just for us moving to Houston was, you know, to try something new. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of amazing musical talents are from Houston, you know. Mm-hmm. So I guess it was just to try something new and a leap of faith, honestly. That's what it was. And I guess it was the right choice, obviously. Yes, it's up. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about this brand new single, The Beginning. I, I, first of all, I want to know the creative process. I heard the song. I was listening on YouTube. I was like, oh, this is beautiful. It's melodic. It's, just, it's beautiful. You sound amazing. For you, and if you can get the less listeners an audience, of what goes into a piece of artwork like that, was it constant hours of just getting it right and yeah just if you can give me an idea of of your creative space and your mindset when you're creating and putting that that type of music out okay well first off thank you so much i'm really glad that you enjoyed that yes i did (laughs) it's really good (laughs) you put a lot of time in that really i first started writing the the beginning i believe in like my senior year wow and i was just sitting in my homeroom class and Mm. i wrote down the beginning Mm. all the And from there, in my mind, I kind of just knew that the song was going to be something important to me. I didn't even know it was going to be a song at first. I just wrote down the beginning. Wow. So simple. You hear it in movies and, you know, the start of books and all of that stuff. And I just felt like it was going to be something really strong for me. Mm -hmm. So really like a couple months after that, I just did like a random voice recording on my phone. It was a completely different melody, but Mm -hmm. I just, I just did it and I I was pretty much just singing the chorus in the same kind of melody. From there, a couple months later, I, I totally forgot about that. I went back to it and I was like, ooh, let's let's use this. I think this could <laughs> develop into something really cool. Yeah. So I did. And I mean, the song took about like a year to fully complete. Okay. Uh, lyrically. And after signing to Liner Entertainment Group, my manager was able to get in contact with Matthew Tribo, who's the producer of the single. Mm-hmm. You know, he's an amazing producer, an amazing producer. He's worked with you know, Taylor Swift and Ariana Grande and One Republic. Mm-hmm. All amazing artist. And he was really just able to transform the song mm. into what it is right now and, and give it life. And I think it's really important 
And what I'm learning is that it's really just important to work with people who, who also can connect to, mm -hmm. to the song and to the message and, and, and to you as well. I think that's also really important. So because he was able to do that so easy, so easily, mm -hmm. able to bond over, you know, literally anything, but especially with the song, just so seamless. It mm. was, I don't know, just everything came together and we were finally able to, you know, create the record and I was able to record it and it came together and, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's streaming globally right now, everywhere. Once again, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard the song, don't worry, we're going to get it. We're going to post the link, obviously, on the show notes of this episode as well, too. Please stream, 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 download it, continue to support it. From the success from this video, though, uh, from this song, there's a music video as well premiering soon, I believe. Yes, it's coming out uh, midnight. Ah, I got the first exclusive. <laughs> yes. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So midnight, yes. So 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 tonight, that's dropping. And yeah, now tell me about the music video. What What goes into that? Yes. So with the music video, mm -hmm. um, I just really wanted to create something that felt like a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with the single, when I was recording it, I just, it felt really calming and it felt really natural. And, you know, I wanted the music video to also em emulate that feeling as well. So my mother, mm -hmm. she directed the video as well as styled my outfit. And we pretty pretty much just like rode around to different spots in Houston and, you know, press record and mm -hmm. she edited the video and all of that stuff. And I don't know, it just, I wanted it to be really nice and, uh, you know, kind of natural. That's mm -hmm. kind of what, what I wanted it to be. Just really nice and natural. I mean, you guys will be able to see it soon. Yes, in. Yes, nice, yes. You know? And what's the best place they can tune is that go to your, should they go to your YouTube? Should they go to your website? To channel as well as my website, oh. com. If you do decide to go on my website, you can also go on YouTube at shanirnapool and you can watch it. Fantastic. We're hours away from the countdown. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. In terms of your, your future endeavors and your future plan, of course, we have this major, major release hours away. Is there anything that you foresee yourself kind of tapping into to maybe the fourth quarter, the end of the year, or just in general that the that your fans can be on a, the lookout for? Yeah, of course. My fans can definitely sound so crazy saying that, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. You got some fans. <laughs> um, well, thank you. Guys. Um, definitely new music. That's like the biggest thing. I, Beautiful. I want to create more content and you know more music. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I, I just want to show my fans, uh, you know, the dancer in me. I think the beginning was a was a really good way to kind of uh, introduce myself to the world, mm -hmm. uh, you know, vocally, as well as like visually. But I think the next single expects a dance track, definitely. So wow. Like, <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Wow. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so we got singing, we got your vocal coach, we have your background, of course, too. Uh, the dance, the dance arena as well too. I heard a little bit about the creative arts, right? Uh, do you foresee yourself getting into the TV screens, the movies, the premieres, film in general? Maybe not now, of course, but would that be of any interest to you? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I love film. In fact, like a lot of my songs, mm -hmm. are, and even the beginning, are like widely inspired by movies that I've watched. So I don't know. It, I, I definitely want to. I would love to do voice acting. I think that would be really, really fun. It, nice. Voice acting. Uh, awesome. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, final question. One of the most requested questions also for you was uh, people want to see you. People want to come out and support your shows. They want to meet and greet. They want to do uh, look forward to your appearances. Is there anything maybe down the line that you'll be able to premiere and get a chance to perform or any uh, stages, tour, festival seasons, uh, things down the, down the line? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Like everything's coming. Mm -hmm. uh, a plethora of different festivals and shows are definitely coming. Mm -hmm. um, we're really just trying to pull in together a really nice show as well as really good music. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, making sure everything is of quality, especially for the fans. Um, mm -hmm. Everything's everything's coming together, so 
look, look forward to that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Final question for you. I, it's it's always a breath of fresh air for me to realize when someone is putting a hundred percent into their art. It seems like the team is really taking their time to be de- delicate with you. Um, in your creative process, the fans get to. Uh, it's not fast, rush, 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 rush. Just throw a bunch of stuff out there. What I like is I see the beginning. Literally, uh, plug that song right there. That's so fire. <laughs> I see the beginning of your career. And then I also see I can grow with you. I can, yeah. I, you know what I mean? I can, I feel like I have a, a relationship with you. I can see your progress in real time. I think a lot, we live in an industry where everything right now is so instant. Everybody want to go viral. Everybody want to do this, but they don't want to build, right? They don't want to curate. They don't want to sit down and have conversation. For you, is that intentional for your team? They, you want them and your fans and the public to see what you're putting into the project and what are you putting into your art? Of course, yeah. I always want to be intentional. And even my team, we always want to be really intentional with what we do. Mm -hmm. I think for all of us, the art and showing the art is extremely important to just making sure that everything that we put out, Mm -hmm. um, again, it's of quality. You know, it's Mm -hmm. something people be able to hold on to. You know, timeless music is something that I love, you mm-hmm. know, and as well as visuals and, you know, the way I style my hair or the makeup I wear, everything is always, always 100% intentional. We always just want to make sure that, you know, what we're putting out, the fans will be able to like take with them mm-hmm. and uh, keep with them and, you know, hopefully exude a positive, you know, emotion out of them. Mm-hmm. Want, yeah. Fantastic. Well, Chanel, I tell you, it's been an absolute joy to have you on the platform. I'm going to be logged on tonight because I'm going to be watching the video. Yes, <laughs> yes I am. I'm going to be yeah. tuned in. Absolutely. Any last thing you want to say to your, uh, to your team? Any public thank yous? Acknowledgement is a lot of people obviously behind the scenes of, 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 of what we do, but they're very intricate in our lives. Uh, it's a perfect opportunity to plug them as well as kind of thank them. Uh, and let the fans know that, you know, obviously you can't do it ourself. I can't do it myself, but we have a team and a family behind us. So is there anyone you want to publicly thank? Of course, yes. Diane Liner, mm-hmm. uh, Liner Entertainment Crew. A huge thanks to her. She's my manager. And, you know, she's the one that's steering this ship. She's getting <laughs> the, you know, interviews with Startup Media. Yay! <laughs> also, you know, pretty much just encouraging me as well. You know, so many different things go on behind the scenes that I don't even know about, but like, Mm -hmm. it's, it's always there. I I really do think my team as well as my mom, always, always, always pushing me and positively as well. So yeah, I do thank you guys as well as Startup Media. I appreciate you so much for having us. Uh, Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Shanir Nicole, thank you once again for tapping into our platform, Stardom 101 Magazine Podcast. Here on iHeartRadio, make sure whatever you do, stop, freeze, whatever you do. Tonight is the night. The beginning music video is dropping at midnight. I'll be logged on. Make sure y'all be logged on. Stay, stay, stay tuned. This lady is a star. I'm going to stamp it. I see it. I love what they're doing. Shania, once again, it's been a pleasure and a complete honor to be able to really, really converse with you in a way that's authentic. And thank you for everything that you do. And you're definitely a role model to a lot of people out here. Well, then, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you having me. And thank you to the fans and to anyone watching, even if you don't know who I am. Thank you, guys. I really do appreciate it. You know, all of the support and the love that you've shown. Well, Absolutely. You. Absolutely. It's no problem. Start One Magazine, AHA Radio. Until next week, next time, same place. We love you guys. God bless you. And peace. Are you on the rise to stardom? Well, get featured in the next issue of Stardom 101 Magazine and promote your business or products today. Text MAG to 804-550-8647 or visit stardom101mag.net. You're listening to the Stardom 101 Magazine podcast with Christopher Boykin. Be sure to subscribe and download this episode and continue to listen to Stardom on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.